Hey guys, what's up? Scottish Duck here once again, and this is going to be my review slash thoughts on uh, Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask. And was I just messaged on Facebook? Please tell me I was just no Facebook isn't even open. Never mind, sorry. Uh, yeah, Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask, and I'm also going to kind of be talking about my thoughts on the Professor Layton series in general. Um, I own pretty much everything else uh, related to Professor Layton. I have. Um, Professor Layton in the Curious Village. Professor Layton Pandora's Box. Uh, Professor Layton Unwound Future. This is an American copy. Uh, it's called like Lost Future over here, I believe. And um, I also own Professor Layton and the Eternal Diva. This was the um, animated film that they released. Really good film, by the way. Um, and I don't own Last Spectre, sadly, which is weird because that one's actually my favorite in the series. Um, I was kind of pissed about buying that one day one uh, because the the UK version didn't come with uh, London Life, which was like this little RPG that came with it um, in America, and I was just really pissed off. I just kept thinking to myself, why the fuck didn't they include that? That is so annoying. So I'm going to import the American version at some point, but yeah, that's still my favourite. But one last thing I want to show actually is uh, this. When uh, Unwound Future slash, slash uh, Lost Future came out, the um, the Daily Express released this little ad on the cover of their paper. The Daily Express is like this UK uh, newspaper, you know, and check this out. This is what you got when you bought it. You see that? It's totally like a little fictional, completely fictional story about Professor Layton as if it was actually in London, you know? We advertisement on the back, and you open it up. It's a little, just other little cool bits and bobs, little puzzles you can solve as well. So, I thought that was pretty awesome. Like it really is, clever bit of advertisement, you know. So yeah, I've kept that. That was actually released on the twenty second of October, um, two thousand and ten. So I just remember seeing this and grabbing it, and like I'm keeping it and uh, keep it in the. Uh, Eternal Diva case, you know, for safekeeping. So, yeah. I've been following this series for a while, haven't I? Actually, not necessarily a while, because what happened was um, the crossover game of Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton was released, okay? And, well, not released, it was announced, you know? Now, when that was announced, I didn't actually play a single Ace Attorney or Professor Layton game. So, as a result... I'm constantly comparing these two franchises, okay? And, and you all know how much I love Ace Attorney, okay? That goes without fucking saying at this point. Um, but yeah, I played Ace Attorney first, absolutely fucking loved it. Then I played Professor Layton next. Wasn't, like, mega impressed, but still liked it. So I still pursued the other games in the series, you know? So, um, with that said, the latest release in the series is Professor Layton the Miracle Mask, also the first game to be released on the Nintendo 3DS. Now, um, in terms of being a Professor Layton game, it's got everything you expect. There's the puzzles, there's the exploration, the silly as all hell storyline, and, you know, the sort of charm also, I suppose you could say. Um... In terms of the new interface, because obviously they'll have to have changed it to accommodate for the 3DS hardware, um, they do a good job taking away from mindless clicking, because obviously most stuff you you look at has to be in the top screen where all the 3D is. But you actually have to click a button to go into investigation mode, rather than just tapping all over the screen like you would in the previous games in order to find hidden coins or something. But with that said, by default, you can just click on the world map, which is in the bottom screen by default, to instantly move around. As opposed to the uh, previous games where you had to click the shoe icon and then click an arrow to move about. So, all in all, there really isn't like uh, any additional clicking um, uh, compared to the original DS games, which I'm sure a lot of people probably would have, were expecting uh, because of the 3D screen, you know, people were like, well, wouldn't they want most stuff on there? I mean, you're still so a majority of the puzzles that you still solve are in the bottom screen, and the top screen is kind of just like a little random 3D image that has to do with the puzzle. Sometimes it'll be relevant, but for the most part, it's just there for decoration. Um, so yeah, 3D is a bit of a kind of a gimmick here, you know, it's just there for the hell of it, but admittingly, the 3D is lovely, okay? Um, the environments are sort of um, 
rendered in such a way that when you're in investigation mo mode, it'll sort of rotate slightly, and the 3D really sticks out when that happens. So, in terms of presentation, I really can't hack it. And obviously, the little staple anime cutscenes that you get throughout the Professor Layton games, they're a bit higher quality now, be and in 3D being on the nice little screen and stuff. So, yeah, presentation-wise, can't whack it. You know, good music also and voice acting, but... Is it just me, or does Luke have a different voice actor for every game, okay? It's starting to get freaky, but again, whatever. Um, it's part of the uh, prequel series, you know, and the prequel series consists of, currently, Last Spectre, Eternal Diva, and Miracle Mask. Um, the first trilogy of games, um, these ones right here, have slightly different characters. And I'm going to say right off the bat, I prefer the characters in the prequels. Uh, trilogy, you know. Um, Descalay is a much better villain than Don Paolo, I think. Um, in terms of your female sidekick, I like Emmy a lot more than I liked Flora. You know, Emmy's badass, by the way. And in terms of your, like, rival police inspector, Inspector Grosky is so much better than Inspector Kemley. Seriously, Grosky became one of my favorite character, my favorite character in this series, especially with Eternal Diva. He kicks ass in this game. And he did in Last Spectre as well, but he was kind of underplayed in Miracle Mask, which really fucking annoyed me, so, yeah. So, yeah, um, going back to the, uh, what I feel about the series in general, right? The series is like, um, how do I put this? It's like, it's literally like sort of a two-halves thing, okay? On one half, you've got your sort of, like, presentation and story and characters and all that, and on the other half, you've got all the puzzles. This is a game that's definitely where the story and the gameplay are just like, you know, cut in half. They're completely isolated from each other. There are times where a certain puzzle will be like, um, have some relevance to the actual plot, but that's really rare. Usually the puzzles are just completely random. And I can't say I like that too much, and that's definitely a comp I definitely draw comparisons with a Phoenix Wright, uh, where the story and the gameplay are like, couldn't be more together, you know? So... I think that's why Professor Lane actually works so well as a film, because it's just the story. It's not necessarily the puzzles. They talk about puzzles a lot, but it's still just the story and the charm and all that. And it works extremely well. I mean, I can actually safely say, guys, that I like this film more than any of the Professor Layton games, okay? That may be a bit hard to comprehend, but I'm serious. It really is uh, that good to me. Um, but yeah... Uh, with that said, though, obviously you can get a bit, like, uh, into solving the puzzles, you know. One thing i got to point out, actually, one thing I definitely have to point out is, guys, please tell me, like, I'm not the only one here, but this game, right, is so much harder than the other games, okay? The other games, you know, I could, like, scratch my head and be stuck on a puzzle for a while, but it never gave me a headache, and this game gives me a headache, and it's not just because of the 3D, but some of the puzzles were really fucking hard, and... It drove me crazy at times. I was actually thinking about just giving up because there wasn't really any walkthroughs out. The game had just came out, so I couldn't just, like, be cheeky, sneak it up online and be like, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, but, yeah, really hard. Please tell me there's people that agree with that. Fucking hell. Um, but, yeah, where else? What else is there to talk about? Um... You can't... Obviously, there are puzzles in it that you can enjoy, and in terms of the series as a whole... You'll enjoy it, and, you know, the story's just there to be enjoyed as well, so it's not really a big deal. But I just don't get that feeling of satisfaction as I would in a game like Ace Attorney. Again, I'm drawing comparisons to Ace Attorney because I'm going to be forever like that. Um, I don't mean to say that Professor Layton sucks solely because Profe uh, Phoenix Wright is better. It's I'm not saying that at all. This is a good series, but it's kind of lacking things that are that I do really like, you know. And I've especially seen this after beating uh, Miracle Mask, you know, because the story as a whole was a bit, yeah. And uh, there's actually one aspect to the Professor Layton games that um, I want to dwell in about. The endings to these games, right, are always really fucking stupid, okay? I was actually, the other night there... I was beating Miracle Mask for the first time, and for those of you who have played it, I'm not... In fact, yeah, I am gonna spoil it, okay? I put in the little spoiler warning there at the beginning, didn't I? I will. I'll remember to. But yeah, 
the fucking other games have really stupid endings. It's like they build up this sort of mystery and intrigue, kind of like a episode of Scooby Doo, and then at the end, the Professor Layton just explains it all away with explanations that he's pulling out of his arse. That's just like, how the fuck did you figure that out? And then he gives this half-assed reason how he figured it out, and the the player doesn't see it coming. It just happens, and you're like, what? And all the situations surrounding it are stupid. And oh god, okay. I'm gonna go into each game individually here. This is gonna be fun. I really can't wait to get this off my chest. Okay. Curious Village. The plot twist is... Why is the village curious? Because everyone's a robot. The whole village was a robot and it was built to... Like, um, preserve the innocence or something of the Baron's daughter, Flora. And it was so that she could, like, be happy living in a village filled of robots that aren't fucking real. And it's like, wait, wh why did he do that? Why did he do that to his daughter? Why did he confine her to this village if he loved her so much? What? It's, it's... Pandora's box. The plot twist here, everyone is high and is having the exact same hallucination at the exact same time. Seriously, there's something about gases being leaked and everybody's inhaling them and seeing hallucinations. That's the plot twist. And it's just like, that's a bit too fucking convenient, isn't it? Lost Future slash Unknown Future. Oh, this is the worst one. This is the worst one. Oh, God. So this boy wants revenge on the city of London. So he builds an entire utopia underneath London so that it's exactly like it, only to fool one person who happens to be the smartest man in the world that it's, you know a London of 10 years in the future, not only does he figure it out, duh, but the boy's actually shocked that he figures it out, so he gets a giant fucking robot. I mean, actually, before I say that, he must have unlimited money because he managed to build all of London underground exactly the same as the London up, up above in the space of 10 years, hire millions of actors to play the residency London, and then when it all went to shit, big fucking surprise, he still had a giant fucking robot underneath and uses it to destroy all of London and then on top of that at the end when it's all over he has the balls to say I'm gonna repent professor you were actually the one that saved me that day because you gave me some good advice or whatever so I'm sorry that I still tried to take revenge on you for some reason and on top of that wasn't it just really fucking convenient that he happened to look exactly like an older version of Luke or maybe he actually paid for the plastic surgery I don't know that is really, that is the most stupid thing. That felt good, okay. Um, admittingly, Last Spectre, you know, which was my favourite, that was the least silly of the bunch. I mean, ultimately it was still really silly. I mean, they had this Loch Ness monster for some reason, and apparently that Loch Ness monster fighting with a robot that Descalay made, combined with some fog somehow, to everyone else, looked like a big massive shadow monster destroying the town. How the fuck does that work? But overall, it really wasn't that bad. Um, Eternal Diva wasn't silly at all, really. Really good. I've been praising this a lot, haven't I? I really do like this game. But Miracle Mask. Oh, this was arguably as stupid as Unwound Future, okay? Um, why is everyone in these games a transvestite? Why is everyone a master of disguise and obsessed with dressing up like the opposite sex, okay? It's just like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I should spoil this one too much because it's like, it's just out. But god damn it, it was really, really stupid. So yeah, and you know what? I'm not really particularly mad about the stupidity of the endings of these games because I'm not like raging and all that. But at the same time, it does put me in stitches, you know. Like I was rolling on the ground laughing when I was playing. Masked Miracles ending for the first time. It was just so... Uh... But yeah. Playing, getting to the ending of Masked Miracle really did make me realise something though. It's kind of... It made me realise just how much... Uh, how little I do think of this series. And really, I almost think I'm kind of done with it. I am still really looking forward to the crossover game. Because, you know, that's got Ace Attorney in it. And there's apparently only going to be one more Layton game ever made. Um, which is the sixth game. Coming out for the 3DS in 2000 and... 
Um, it'll be out in 2013 in Japan, and it'll probably be out in 2014 for us. Um, so, I'll probably play that, just for the sake, because I've played all these other games, you know? So, it'd be stupid just to stop right there. But, yeah. Overall, this isn't a series that I'll take with me to the grave or whatever, you know? Unlike Phoenix Wright. Um, but, you know what? Um, if you're a fan of this, you know, don't like him. Um, don't think I'm really... I am coming out here to purposely talk down on it, okay? I admit that, but I still do own these games, and I still had... I like a decent time playing them, they're just not anything special, I mean, that's all, sadly, so. Opinions suck, don't they? But, whatever. Yeah, this really did turn into a big, massive rant anyway, didn't it? So, yeah, final thoughts. Professor Layton Miracle Mask. If you've liked all the other Professor Layton games, quite frankly, you will like this, because it's more or less the same, but the added features, particularly with the um, new 3DS interface, is really good, so... In that regard, I do recommend it. If you're just getting into the series, I guess it would be an okay place to start. Uh, to be honest, any of them would be an okay place to start. So, you know, pick your poison. No, not really. Not really. Not really. Okay. But I'll end this here now. So, yeah. See you after, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.